Police in Hong Kong have made their first arrest under a new national security law. Thousands of people took to the streets today in protest. Police confronted them with water cannon, tear gas and pepper spray. About 400 people were arrested. Protesters say the law strips them of freedoms that China guaranteed when it took back Hong Kong from the British on this day in 1997. Well, Amen Lau is a Canadian Hong Konger and a pro-democracy activist. She's with the Macdonald Laurier Institute and joins us now from Ottawa. Amen, thanks so much for your time. Let's talk about what we know about today's arrests and what they might signal. Thank you for having me. So today's arrests, I think, signals a fear that has been expected for a very long time in Hong Kong, uh, since 97, since uh, Hong Kong ha was handed back to China. Um, but the arrest signals that the, uh, the CCP regime has no appetite for democracy. They want to exert full control over Hong Kong. And we're seeing the decimation of one country, two systems, as we know it. Uh, Hong Kong, as we know, is no more. Did you anticipate this, Ayman, with the arrests almost the moment the law came into effect? Yeah. I, I did anticipate this. I, I think, though, it's been since the 2019 protests, really. We've seen the ever encroachment, uh, ever increasing encroachment on the freedoms of Hong Kongers. But now it's official that freedoms and rights that were once enjoyed and are protected under the Sino British Joint Declaration until 2047 are now criminalized. So it's unsurprising that this has happened. I guess the question is in your view, did China? have a right to pass this law? No, they don't. I mean, they had signed the joint declaration with the understanding that it will be, extent, uh, will be in place until 2047. Hong Kong was supposed to enjoy their autonomy for 50 years. And, but the CCP has already stated that they, uh, they don't respect this. They don't respect the international order or these international commitments that they have uh, committed to. As you well know, there's some 300,000 Canadians in Hong Kong. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess two issues there. What should the federal government do now that this law has been passed? And do you anticipate a time when they might have to be rescued or repatriated to Canada? So first and foremost, the Canadian government needs to take this national security law seriously. It's not siloed just to Hong Kong. Um, there is a clause, uh, Article 38, which has received significant attention under the national security law, which extends the law to be applied on anybody, any person with non-resident status for crimes that are committed outside of Hong Kong. This is a stunning overreach on the CCP regime that they have decided that this law applies to anyone in the world. That has ramifications. And as we've seen, China is willing to engage in hostage diplomacy with our two Michaels. The question now remains is what will the Article 38 presents an opportunity for the CCP to use it to their full advantage? And what risks do our 300,000 Canadians uh, face in the terms of if the government will have to repatriate our citizens? I think that that should be fully considered. Um, we don't know the risk. Hong Kong itself is facing an uncertain future right now. And we should be supporting and extending a line for Hong Kongers seeking to flee persecution. I mean, I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll be watching the story very closely. Thank you so much. I'm Ann Lau of the McDonald Laurier Institute, and she spoke to us from Ottawa.